in this video, I'm going to walk through using the uh, validate doc update function in a CouchDB database uh, to control um, what can and cannot be written uh, to the database. So with CouchDB, uh, uh, one particular structure is to have a, a shared database that everybody uses. Uh, you can have different setups where perhaps you have uh, each user having their own database. So you're not going to really have to worry about uh, any kind of access control, because if you have your own database, generally you can just do whatever you want with it. Uh, but in a shared sort of environment, you might want to create some restrictions on what people can actually uh, update certain documents with. And one way we can do that is with uh, some functionality that is built directly into CouchDB, and that's a, the validate doc update function. And essentially what this function does is it's something that we can add to design documents, and that's something I've covered in the past. Uh, so I'll link to uh, a tutorial that covers that, as well as some other getting started with CouchDB type stuff, because I'm not going to focus on that here. And so what the validate doc update function does is for every document update that you send to CouchDB, uh, it's going to run these functions, and it's going to compare the old document to the new document. And then you can add whatever kind of function you want uh, that does something with those two documents to determine whether or not you want to accept that update. So I've got a, uh, this is from another tutorial I did uh, called, a, it was a logging CouchDB sort of application called CouchBlog. And that was just a simple, very simple kind of basic to do type uh, situation where we just created an application that allowed people to um, post a, a blog post and then have comments attached to that blog post. And we pulled that data into an Ionic application and it was all very basic. Uh, but it's going to be useful for uh, this example because we've got some data there that we can work with and we already have a couple of design documents set up as well. As I mentioned, I'm not going to cover design documents in this video, uh, but if we look at this one here, we have a, a, a post design document. And in that, all we have is just a, a view here called by date published, which just uh, creates a view of our data that's going to display a list of, uh, of posts by the date they were published. But as well as having uh, views defined in this design document, this is also where we can add our validate doc update function. And so I'm going to mess around with this view now, and we're going to add a validate doc update function, and then we're going to uh, see if we can you know, update certain things, break the rules, and see what happens. Now, as you can see with the uh, view I have defined here, this is also just a function uh, that takes in a document, and then we do something with that document uh, to determine which documents get emitted into that view. And so it's a similar concept with the validate doc update function where we'll have this function defined here just as a string uh, and then we do something with that. But in the case of validate doc update, rather than just handing a single document, we're going to have that uh, old document, the new document, and also something called user context. So what I think I'll do is just jump straight into uh, giving that a go uh, to see, uh, to help explain it along the way. I don't want to sort of spend too much time explaining before we actually take a look at something. So what I'm going to do to start off with is just because it's a bit awkward to try and uh, write a function um, just as a string like this, I'm going to jump into a text editor, we're going to design the function there, and then we'll put it into uh, this design document afterwards. Okay, so our validate doc update function is going to look like this. Um, so to give you context, the uh, we'll have a validate doc update uh, property in this design document here, and that's going to be a function like this is. So that function is going to look like this. We have a function, we're going to have the old doc, new doc, and user context as parameters. And so as I mentioned, the old document is, is the document that is already in uh, the database. The new document is the new document that the user is attempting to write. And the user context contains information about all the current user's context. So if you've got some kind of uh, a login system going, it might contain roles uh, related to that user, whether they're an admin or what user type they are. Um, so you could use those to determine whether or not a user should be allowed to uh, uh, write to a particular document. Uh, but we're mostly going to be focusing on just the old doc and new doc for now. So we're just going to start off with something really simple, and that is just rejecting everything outright. So if we don't want to allow any users to make any updates whatsoever to this database, we can just throw I uh, will throw a uh, forbidden message here. So we'll say uh, throw forbidden, uh, you can't do that. So if we throw an error like this, that's going to reject that update. It's not going to do it. So if I take this now 
And when I'm uh, actually putting these uh, into uh, CouchDB, I generally just highlight these, go edit line, join lines, and just so we can get it in one simple long string there. So if I edit this um, uh, document now, we're going to add another field here, and that's going to be the validate doc update field. And that's just going to be uh, the function we just created. So I'm going to paste that there, and I'm going to save that. And I'll hit save document as well. Okay, so now we have this uh, validate doc update function. This should get triggered every time we try to write some document. Uh, and if we have, you, know, you saw before I had multiple design documents. I had the posts and the comments. And so if you have multiple design documents, you can have multiple validate doc update functions. Uh, but every validate doc update function will run for uh, every document. So even if I was updating something related to comments, this uh, validate doc update function will still run. So now we've got that error defined there, let's try and jump back and I'll just say uh, edit one of these posts. Uh, so I'll change some great content to some bad content. And I'll hit save on that and click save document. And immediately I get this um, uh, error that pops up, it says error forbidden, you can't do that. And that was the exact error message that we defined. So whatever we try to do now, it is never going to let us update uh, anything. Uh, so what we're going to do now is get rid of that validate doc update function so that we can actually do stuff again. So if I delete that, save it, and now if I go back to that same uh, post again, I think it was this one, we'll try that update again, some great content, we'll change that to some uh, some bad content, hit save, save the document, and now it works because we, we're not throwing that error anymore. And so the basic concept here is then, well, all we have to do is just add whatever kind of logic we want into this function, and then if we don't want the update to happen, just throw an error. And so now let's you know, try something a little bit uh, more realistic. Let's say um, that you know, we want to allow the content to be updated, but uh, we don't want the uh, author field to ever change. So what we can do for that, let's first of all just get rid of this uh, error here. What I can do now is I can say, well, okay, I want to look at the old document and compare that to the new document. So all I have to do is say, well, if old doc.author does not equal uh, new doc.author, we're going to throw uh, an error. So I'll say throw, and again, we'll say forbidden. Um, author uh, cannot be changed. Uh, so now if the, the uh, the new document update, if the author has been changed, it's not going to allow that update. Uh, there's a couple things you need to watch out for here because what if, say, the old document doesn't exist? You could be writing a new document, uh, but this uh, function is still going to run. It runs for every single uh, document update that's coming to uh, the database. So before we make this uh, this check here, checking if the authors match, uh, we should also check that, well, if old doc is actually being passed in. So in the case of just a new document being created, now this won't run, uh, which is what we want to happen. Uh, but there's even more things to worry about. So uh, let's say that you have different types of documents in your database. So I don't actually recall with, uh, with this, we have an author for uh, a post there, and we have an author for comments too. So that's not going to matter in this case, but let's say if you had a different type of document that didn't have an author, and you try to run this function, um, you know, it's checking this author field, if it doesn't exist on all documents, if you're trying to write something that doesn't have an author, then this is going to fail. Uh, it's going to mess things up. So generally what you would want to do uh, with this validate doc update function is um, have some kind of check for the type of the document. So you might say if uh, if new doc dot type equals uh, post, you know, we want to run these checks. Or if the new doc dot type equals uh, comment, then we want to run these checks. And as I mentioned before, just because we're adding this validate doc update function to our post design document, it doesn't mean that it's only going to apply to posts. Uh, this will run for every single uh, document. So let's test this um, uh, validate doc update function now. So we'll do the same thing again. We're just going to join everything onto uh, one line here. And we're going to dump that back into the post design document again. So we'll add our uh, validate doc update uh, 
property back here. We'll save that. And now let's go try to change some things. So first of all, um, let's go back to that same one again. So we had some bad content. Let's again try to change that back to some great content now. Uh, hopefully that should allow us to do that. So we save it and the, uh, the changes there, that worked. Now let's say uh, we want to edit the author field now. Uh, now rule says you can't edit the author field. Whatever the author field is originally, it has to be that uh, afterwards as well. So if I change this to Josh Maroney to say Joshua Maroney, uh, that's different now. So I'm going to click save, save document, and I get the error pop up says author cannot be changed. So that's running our uh, doc update, uh, validate doc update function here. It's running this check and that's failing, so it's throwing the error. And just to double check that there isn't any issue with, say, new documents, I'm going to try just to create a uh, an entirely new document here. So we'll go new document and we're just going to paste the same thing. We're just going to edit the, get rid of that revision field and we'll change this to some blog post too. So if I save that now, hopefully that should allow us to save it and it doesn't there. So what's the problem here? Okay, so I've got an error saying that the new doc is, uh, is null. And uh, I think what I've actually done is I've got uh, the validate doc update function backwards. Uh, yeah, the parameters are backwards here. So this should be new doc, old doc, not old doc, new doc. So I'll change that and I probably should put a, I'll put up a little notice earlier on so you don't go making that mistake if you didn't happen to watch to the end. Uh, so if I save that, uh, we'll do the same thing again now that um, the parameters are right. So what was happening there was when we're checking to see if the old doc exists here, since we're passing that in wrong, we're actually referring to, we're checking if the new document was there. And so of course that was there because you know we're creating a new document. Uh, but then it was checking for the old document, which was actually the new document and causing some problems. So uh, it's important to have that around the right way here. So I'll update that again now. So we'll come back to that design document and we'll change the, oh, I could really just do this manually here. Change that to new doc, change that to old doc and save that. And now let's try that uh, again. So we'll just steal this content again. Go create a new post. To some blog post to get rid of the revision. And I'll hit save. Cool, so that let us create that author there. Uh, and again, just to double check, try to change that to Joshua, click save and we get the error that it, uh, the author can't be changed. So that's exactly what we want to happen. So you can create a whole you know, range of different checks in here, and you can even create functions uh, within this validate uh, doc update function if you want to make things a bit easier. So let's say if you were, you might want to check if a certain field has been uh, filled out in the document that it exists in the document. And so one uh, sort of common a patent implement here is to use this uh, type of um, uh, helper function here that can check if a certain field is um, present. So we can call require, pass it the field, and uh, if that field doesn't exist, we can pass it a message. Um, so let's say, and as well as I check here, we don't want authors to change. Let's say on you know any kind of document, it must contain a, um, I've forgotten what fields are here, a content. We'll say it has to contain a content. Um, so if the type is a post, we'll say it has to have a content field. And so, and we could also pass in, if we want to pass in an error message for that, we could also do that. So we could of course just check this manually. Uh, we could check if the post document had the, you know, content property field out. Um, but, you know, if you start doing that for a lot of different things, uh, it's going to get quite big and messy in this function. Uh, whereas this, all you have to do is write require this field and that's it. If the, if the document does not contain that field, then it's going to uh, throw the error. So let's try, we'll try this function now, check that that works. So again, we'll head back into our uh, design document and we'll update that uh, function with our new function here. Hit save on that. And what we're going to do now is try and create another new uh, document. 
except this time we are going to try and uh, not have a content field. So if I paste that, uh, again, we'll just change this to some blog post three, get rid of the revision. And we're also going to delete the content property here. So if I hit save now, save document, uh, I've got another error here because I seem to be doing that a lot today. Let's just quickly jump back in here. It says the type wasn't defined. And again, I forgot to reference the document. Uh, so uh, we'll just say new doc dot type equals post. Join those lines, copy that, head back into our design document once more. Hopefully this is the last time we'll have to do this. So I'll paste that there, save the document, head back into here again. We'll grab this data again, create the new document again, change that, get rid of the revision, get rid of the content and hit save. And there we go. So now we get the proper error here, which is uh, that the document must have a content. I should probably say it should have a content field. Um, so we say, well, whoops, that, no, that was an accident. I meant to include the content field there. So we add in content. Here you go. And we'll try to save it again now. And this time it works. So I think this uh, the concept of the validate doc update function is a little bit confusing uh, at first, um, but once you understand that it's just a function that runs for every single document update, the new document gets passed into this function and compared to the old document, and then basically you just do whatever JavaScript you want in here. Uh, you can compare things in any way you want. You can do date comparisons or uh, any kind of logic, and in the end, if it throws an error, the document update will be rejected. And if it doesn't, then the document update will uh, proceed. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.